Okay, um, fire away. I'm sure you guys have just been waiting to come up with some great questions. Excellent questions, obviously. Um, the You've always had excellent questions, so uh, your game has been really good this year. Oh, thank you. Um, kind of two questions related to cornerback, one sort of in the immediate now and then in the future over the offseason. One, just with the bowl game, a few guys transferring. Uh, Makai seems to be headed uh, for the NFL as well. What's the – who's available there to play in this game, and what is that kind of looking like? And then as you head into the offseason, kind of having to rebuild that room again, how are you all going about doing that? What Are you, you going to rely mainly on freshmen or try to bring in some transfers? So we've got uh, Jarek Bernard Converse. Um, so obviously he'll, he'll be available. Uh, and um, Jay Ward. So feel really good at the cornerback position. Um, and, you know, those will be our starters. Um, I think, uh, you know, we, we feel like the depth there is, is uh, you know, certainly young, but we'll be okay there. So we feel like our two starting corners are, you know, going to match up, you know, very well. Um, so, you know, I, I think the way we – feels best is you don't want to um, every year jump into the transfer portal when it comes to the cornerback position. We did it this year because it, there was such a need to um, put together a representative group. So um, I think there's going to be uh, a heavy influence uh, on freshmen. And, and, and that's how we want this program to be built. Does that mean we won't look at a transfer? Um, no, it doesn't mean we would close the door on that. But last year, as you know, they were one year, you know, and done. Um, we're not looking in that respect. You know, uh, corners would have to have, if we were to move in that direction, they would have to have more than one season of competition if we did go that route. But. By and large, philosophically, this is, um, you know, try to build it with, with freshmen. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, the NCAA said they were going to do the blanket waiver uh, to where bowl games wouldn't count against a red shirt. Um, just your thoughts there, and does that help you all this year? It helps a lot. You know, obviously with the transfer portal and guys making decisions to not uh, play in bowl games because they want to get into the transfer portal, it, it really – it, it hits your roster because, look, you've got guys that are deciding on whether they play in the bowl game, you know, and pursue their options relative to the NFL. Then you've got the transfer portal. You certainly, it, it's so difficult to get a, a mid-year into school, prepared to play. That, that's really, that's not a great option. So I, I think that this is a great move by the NCAA. Um, and, and, and I think it really almost is, is player safety because we're so depleted, you know, from a roster standpoint um, that it takes away any of the, well, I don't have enough players to play. I mean, you guys all remember last year, Garrett Nussmeyer could have played in this game last year. So this is a smart move. I think it's appropriate, and, and I think it – it really addresses some of the new things that are happening in college football, and it's um, it's been well received. Yeah, just uh, kind of along those lines. I mean, you mentioned how opportunistic this was going to be for a lot of the young guys on the roster who maybe haven't seen a lot of the reps this year. Just early impressions of some guys that are maybe standing out, that are maybe showing improvement that you were hoping to see, and just kind of what their roles could look like in this bowl game. So we just finished. Um, you know, probably a 40-place scrimmage with a lot of the young guys, and it was a live scrimmage, tackle scrimmage. Um, you know, we got a lot of the guys, um, you know, some work. It was good to see, like, Landon Ibietta back. You know, he had been out most of the season. And, you know, it, it, you know, we hadn't seen much of him, but he can catch the football. He's elusive, you know. Um, you know, nice to see, um, you know, Quincy Wiggins, you know, where, you know, he was kind of stalemated at that fourth game and, and being able to get him out there and, and practice, you know, quite a bit was 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 really good. Um, you know, I'd say, you know, LaTerrence Welch and, and um, you know, I, I, I could probably give you a few more guys, but it's it's this is this is that time where you get a chance to see them and then We'll watch the film today and, and probably see a few more guys that, 
you know, Walker Howard obviously looked really good in the red zone today. So, look, I, I don't want this to be like, you know, oh, my God, Walker Howard, he's ready to be the starting quarterback. You know, this is just observations of guys and answering your question that, you know, it was nice to see them get out there today, and that's what you use some of these practices for. Um, you've talked a lot about um, focusing your recruiting on the state of Louisiana first, but what is your approach when it comes to national recruiting and, you know, prioritizing those guys too? Well, we're, we're going to identify the best prospects, um, you know, throughout the country. Um, and, and you'll see that in this signing class. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have players from the Northeast, from the Midwest, from you know the west coast uh, but our base will be louisiana and and the south but i i don't think you can you know when you're lsu and and you have a brand that is so recognizable throughout the entire country you can't have blinders on either <laughs> where you go oh i'm just in louisiana and i'm not going outside it so we, our scope and vision is national but it's not like we're pulling, you know, four guys out of every state. You know, we're going to have a heavy influence in the state of Louisiana like we should, but we're going to know where the, the, the best players are in the country as well. And you'll see on signing day, they're from the Midwest. They're from the Northeast. They're from Florida and Texas and California. And I think that's representative of saying, yeah, we're going to national recruit, but we're going to pull our base. Is B.J. Ojolari going to be playing in the Citrus Bowl? I don't think he meant, said if he would. He is not going to be playing. Then what do you all do at edge rusher uh, for this game, also with Desmond Little having uh, entered the transfer portal? Yeah, we think we've got some, some options there that, that I think will um, provide the kind of defensive pressure that we need. Um, you know, we like, we like some of the guys we have that um, are practicing right now. Um, you know, we're going to put all 10 guys up on the line of scrimmage, blitz them all. <laughs> Trade secrets. Coach, uh, Jaden Daniels. Yes. Ha is there an update on him? And I'm Yeah, he looked really good today. Um, he's been limited, but today was kind of his last test. Uh, we did some – one of the things we like to do is put the quarterback in direct snap. Um, so he's pushing off and driving back. You know, it's hard when you're in shotgun, you know, you shuffle your feet and you throw and you're like, and that's how you can get him back quickly when you're in shotgun. Uh, but you put him in direct snap and he's got to drive and use his weight and transfer in a seven step drop and then step up uh, and move. You know, you're ready. And today he went through that progression. I would say, well, today is Saturday, right? If we were playing tomorrow, he'd be ready to play. Um, I guess now that you're in it, um, you've been flying all over the country, high school recruiting, you've got guys entering the portal, recruiting guys in the portal, signing day coming up, practicing for a bowl. Is this what you expected? Is this something you think can stand long term or is this kind of a lot going on right now? Just kind I of curious it. your thoughts. I love it. I mean, I, look, there's a lot to manage. I've got a great staff. I can't do it by myself, but I've got a great personnel staff. I've got a great recruiting staff. Um, and, and it allows me to, you know, stay at 35,000 feet in a sense that I can see the whole thing because I have such great support staff that are giving me the information necessary to make the decisions that need to be made because decisions still have to be made relative to, you know, are we going into the portal? You know, what are we doing relative to, you know, this recruiting or, you know, roster and roster management and all of those things. Um, so... I love it. It's it's. There's a lot of pieces to this, and it's moving quickly. Um, but I embrace it, and I, I think it's because I've got a really good staff. Yeah, Coach. Uh, how tricky is it preparing for a team with an interim head coach and a lot of opt-outs at their their most important positions? Well, we've watched their their backup quarterback. Um, you know, he played 68 snaps against I think it's Florida Atlantic. So we know who he is and, um, you know, they're, they're, look, they're playing LSU. 
They're going to play hard. They're going to play for four quarters. They're a Big Ten team. They've got scholarship players. So, um, you know, we're not really that concerned about Purdue not showing up and playing, you know, really well. Uh, I think what we're concerned is, you know, what we do and how we do it. You know, you don't tackle a lot during these bowl games. You know, we have some guys that are not going to be playing. So I think our focus has really been much more on what we do and how we do it and our preparation more so than, you know, really concerning ourselves with what Purdue's situation is. Coach, you got a, a roundabout number between high school signees and transfer portal kids that might be your total when the, when the dust settles on this hall for 23? Yes. Do, do you want me to? No. You'd like a number? Uh, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be in the mid to high thirties. Um, so I think, I think within a calendar year, you know, we could be close to turning over 70 scholarships. You think that number's going to be ongoing? You think when you look back over a span of four or five years, where the number's going to be similar, it's going to be like a, an average? Well, it's certainly, you know, when, when they changed the number from 25, there was certainly the need to go above that 25 number because of people moving in and out of your program. I certainly don't think it's going to be in the mid to high 30s. I think that that's, that's outside the lines. Uh, I, but I do believe that the high 20s is, is going to be the norm. I remember years where I was 18. I think those, those days are over. Ryan, obviously you can't talk about any specific signees for a few days yet still, but kind of random question here about tight ends. Um, what do you specifically do you all look for as you're evaluating that position? So the, the tight end position sometimes gets looked at as, you know, are you a ball catcher? Are you an inline, you know, run blocker? Um, I think you have to look at the ability to develop tight ends. And so I've always looked at, um, the ability to develop them from their athletic ability, um, and then do they have the size to be a complete tight end? So it's easy to say, well, I, I can get a six foot six tight end who's 215 pounds and he can be a ball catcher and I can split him out. I prefer not to do that. I prefer to look at somebody that can develop into uh, a complete tight end, that can play in line, that can spread out, that can catch the football, that can do all those jobs and not be one dimensional at that particular position. So um, that's our profile. That's specific to what we do here at LSU now. That might not be specific to everybody. You can see that some schools would prefer just a big tight end that, that is almost a tackle. Uh, and then one that is maybe a little bit slighter and is just a ball catcher and they kind of combined them as one. We would prefer to take somebody that we can develop into uh, that tight end that can be all of that. Ryan, uh, it's a little, been a little while now since Keishan Butte made his uh, announcement, but um, if you would talk about what, it's, uh, what his decision means for your team going forward into 2023, uh, how, how big a priority was that? And is it, is it fair to say that, that uh, his relationship, relationship with you is one of the ones that has come the farthest since, uh, since you first arrived here, given some of the, the comments you we remember you made in spring football? Yeah, I would say that it's evolving. And, and look, everybody has evolved in this program. You know, Kayshawn's not different than, than anybody else. I think that everybody's worked really hard at trying to do the things necessary on a day-to-day -day basis um, to you know, be a champion, and, and both on and off the field. And, th and that's the expectations that, that we have for all of our players, not just Kayshawn. Um, so you have choices, right? I mean, you can, you can choose to um, stay and continue to work um, on those things necessary to be a champion, or you can move on. Um, 
obviously with his announcement, he chose that he wants to continue to work on those things, and good for him. Um, but those guys that have eligibility remaining that want to be here know that there's a standard, and they have to continue to work toward, towards that standard every day, and he's no different. Hi, Coach. Hi. So with um, Josh Williams and Cam Wire walking across the stage yesterday, your, se your mantra all season has been graduate champions. So what level of pride do you take in seeing those guys walk across the stage and hopefully getting more guys to walk across the stage? Well, we had quite a few walk in the fall, um, and, and we'll, we'll have more in the spring. Uh, yeah, really proud of him, and, and certainly uh, Josh's uh, speech, I don't know if you heard it, but it was uh, pretty amazing. Talked about his time as a walk-on and um, reflected on that journey and, and certainly where he is today as, as one of the most respected players in our program. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're looking for is, is somebody that um, – is uh, appreciative of the opportunity, has grown from his time here at LSU, uh, and will represent uh, all of the traits uh, that you know we espouse here at, at LSU and, and in our athletic department. So, yeah, pretty pretty proud of of all those guys, and in particular the way he handled himself for sure. Great, thank you, appreciate it.